Hey, what's up guys? Today I want to talk about the altitude sensor and how to test it up on this Mercedes C200. So this sensor is located on the intake manifold down here. It's basically the same sensor as the manifold absolute pressure sensor. You can see over here, which is measuring the pressure inside the intake manifold. Now this altitude sensor, it does what it says, basically measures the atmospheric pressure. The air can be found in different forms and stages like temperature, density, volume and pressure. So the PCM will read these values of the air which enters the engine. Like for the volume, the PCM will use the data from the MAP sensor or for the pressure, the PCM will use the data from the MAP sensor and so on. Now in order to validate the data taken by the MAP sensor, when let's say there is a vacuum leak or the MAP sensor is faulty, the PCM will check the exterior air pressure in order to compare the data against the MAP sensor. So to make the things more clear, let's say for example there is a crack in the intake manifold and the pressure inside it is lower than it should. So the PCM will expect more pressure to be read by the MAP sensor because the MAP sensor and the throttle body will indicate that there is a lot of air going in but still there is no much increase in pressure inside the intake manifold. And the PCM will take in consideration that maybe the car went on let's say 5000 meters mountain when there is a less pressure on the ambient air. So when the altitude sensor will show that the atmospheric pressure did not change, then it will be easier for the PCM to throw the most accurate trouble code in the case of the cracked intake manifold. Therefore, the altitude sensor is more like a backup extra data used by the PCM when needed. It's not crucial for the normal engine operation, but when the PCM needs it, it's better to have it and in good working condition. Now, in order to test it up, as you can see on the sensor, you've got marked the wires. You've got 5 volts in the left, the signal wire in the middle and the ground for both of them on the right. So just back probe the ground wire and the 5 volts input wire and you should obviously read 5 volts on your multimeter. Next, back probe the signal wire. Here is where the voltage output will change depending on the atmospheric pressure. But when measuring in a steady condition it should be a fixed number. As you can see I got 1.33 volts. Let's say you can't get any response in voltage from the sensor. One test you can do is the continuity between the sensor ground and the negative terminal of the battery. In this way you can check if the computer switch does work on the ground side. This can be a common failure for many sensors, not only for this one. Now in order to check how the sensor reacts to any atmospheric pressure change, you can use a hand vacuum pump if you have. If not, a large syringe with a hose will do a similar job. So go ahead and back probe with your voltmeter on the ground and signal wire. Then when you increase the pressure on the sensor, the voltage should increase. And as you can see, the voltage is also rising to around 4.6 volts. When I return back to 30 on the syringe scale, the voltage is back to 133, which is the actual pressure of the atmosphere at this moment. Now, if I decrease the pressure and suck more air, the voltage should obviously decrease. Right, so now I want to show you how to bench test this sensor. It can be useful to confirm 100% that the sensor is bad or not and if you need a new sensor or not. Therefore, you will need 5 volts input. I've got here a power bank which will deliver exactly 5 volts and I'm going to connect it the ground side on the minus, the positive on the 5 volts pin. I will take my voltmeter, set it to 20 volts. Right, so I've done my setup. I've got the voltmeter on, on the sense wire. And here is a good example of a bad sensor. You can see the values are very low. I've got my syringe connected. If I put pressure on, there is no change in voltage whatsoever. That's a clear indication of a bad sensor. And I'm pretty sure my wires are not touching each other. Finally, keep in mind that a faulty altitude sensor will not make the check engine light go on and any possible trouble codes generated by this sensor can be read by the factory scan tool or any other high-end scan tool. All right guys, that's how you test the altitude sensor on this car or map sensor. Thanks for watching. If you are new to this channel and you want to see more car repair videos, hit that subscribe button and until next time, drive safe and I will see you soon. Now in order to check if the values are changing, ah, 